with Sarah with Futurism. Today we're here at the incredible World's Fair Nano in Brooklyn. We're going to be speaking with some really revolutionary scientists who are changing the fields of neuroscience, planetary science, 4D printing, and more. The first thing I want to talk to you about is just to get a really general idea of what is quantum computing. Uh, let's say you go to the Library of Congress, and I, I put an X in one of the books, and it's in one of the stacks. And I say, go find that X, you have five minutes. <laughs> when you choose one alternative, it's at the expense of all others. What quantum mechanics says most fundamentally about our world is you would be in 50 million sort of parallel realities. In each one, you could try another alternative, and one of yourselves would find that book, say, in 20 seconds instead of many lifetimes. So quantum computers access these multiple branches of reality and sort of do different parts of the problem in these different branches of reality and have them collaborate to solve what would otherwise be impossible. And those problems already exist in systems on Earth. A very mundane example, FedEx. I want to figure out an optimal routing strategy, like which, how do I take which packages through which hubs to minimize fuel consumption and energy? We can't do that problem on all the supercomputers on Earth right now because the number of possible scenarios is vast. Can you speak a little bit about kind of where D-Wave is now, where you guys plan to be in maybe 30 years down the line as well? We've built some of the first commercially available early generation quantum computers. Where we're at now is we've demonstrated the fundamental physics, you know, so we can see that we can access these sort of parallel branches of reality and in the next you know, three to five years, we'll have quantum processes or D-Wave that will be relevant commercially, and in the next, say, five to 10 years, something that's just exceeding anything you could imagine for large-scale problems, if we're successful. So I know that you said that it's kind of hard to imagine some of the things that we're gonna have in 30 years, but I'm gonna ask you to imagine. One of the things we're looking at a D-Wave is how can you take very complex abstract data and build a model with which to make good decisions and get key insights. Humans have no intuitions about the genetic code. So how could I look at that and build a theory of cancer? It's incredibly complex, and humans can't think about these multivariable problems. And right now, even in machine learning, there's some, some pretty profound limitations. They're not able to build hypotheses and build like a scientific theory from complex data like humans do. One thing we're doing at D-Wave is I want this computing system to automatically build models from data with, without human intervention. To take all that data, look at it, see patterns, build a theory that, that produces all that data, and now you have real insight. Well, thank you. Is there any final anything that you want to say about quantum computing or anything that you just want to leave us with? I want to leave people with a sense of responsibility not for just their own short-term self-interest, but to have a broader view uh, of humanity and life on this planet as a whole. And this combination of generating deep understandings and an ethos about the kind of world we want to live in.